Welcome to Dan Really Likes Wine and welcome back to Montegre and Independence, the little wine bar in Stellenbosch where for a second week I find myself surrounded by some seriously cool wine. Last week it was the Montegre side of things, the label that Michael and Rose Jordan, who own this property, have put together. It's all very new and it's all very nice as you would have seen last week, but it's not the only wine on a small and carefully curated list. There's also some very special independent wine. And in the case of the wine this week, a wine made by two guys who split their time between making world-class South African vintages and spending time on the waves. They're both very, very dedicated and quite accomplished surfers. But it is their wine rather than surfing achievements we focus on today. And the first of those is a winemaker who's very, very well known in South Africa. He spent 17 years full-time at Takara. He's starting to move away before heading off on his own project. His name is Miles Mossop and he delivers two very special wines to us today, starting with the Saskia. So this is a Chenin Blanc lead blend, uh, about 67%, uh, two thirds or thereabouts. Uh, it's got 20 odd percent Viognier and then a little bit of Claret Blanche, something you don't see very much of, just a little spike at the end. And it's named after his daughter Saskia. Been going since 2004, Miles' own label, while he's been working at Takara. He leaves Takara next year and focuses on his own project where the Saskia and the Max, which we'll try in a moment, are evidence and ample evidence that when he's on his own he does some very very exciting work. There's a rich golden colour to this wine. It looks lovely and it tastes lovely. There's a deep, rich grapefruit feel to it. Uh, beautiful structure, beautiful balance. Uh, you can feel the Shannon, but you can feel that there's more to it. Uh, and that blend has come together delightfully. And Miles has been doing terrific work for almost two decades at Takara and his next journey into his own label has a lot of people in the wine industry very, very excited. And the Saskia is a very good reason for that excitement. From the Saskia to the Max, a lot of winemakers I've spoken to and asked about the favorite wine in a particular range have responded that you can't pick your wine. It's like trying to pick your favorite child. Now, when the wine is named after your children, I think it becomes even harder. Daddy, which wine do you like best? The one named after me or the one named after my sister? Now, the sister is the red blend. This is a, a white blend. This is a red blend, the Max uh, Cab Sav. It's about half Cab Sav. The rest of it made up by some Merlot and some Petit Verdot, 31 and 18 percent respectively. The wine's all from here in Stellenbosch, so it is very local and speaks to exactly what they're trying to do here at Montegrain Independence, celebrate independent winemaking genius from in and around Stellenbosch. Very simply on the back of both of Miles's labels are the words a dry white or red wine. Uh, the focus on being dry, not inappropriate unfortunately in the Cape at the moment where everything is indeed bone dry. And this is dry, but it is beautifully so. The Cabernet Sauvignon launches off into that Petit Verdot and, uh, and Merlot, and it is incredibly smooth. It's got a luxuriant feel to it. It's a glorious big mouthful of wine, and the combination is just done absolutely perfectly. Uh, Saskia, Max, it's a close call. I'm sure the children are delightful. The wine most certainly is. Uh, I'll leave it to Miles to tell you which one he thinks is best. Uh, and uh, Dan really likes wine's point of view. They're both absolutely delightful. From one surfing winemaker to another, and in this case, Rudy Schultz. Rudy's got a great backstory. He's the man at Salima, the winemaker out there. His interest in wine came from sailing. He was on a yacht sailing to the Caribbean, and the owner had a collection of wine, particularly Rhone-style wines. He discovered he rather liked them, got back to South Africa, studied winemaking. Lo and behold, he is now the winemaker at Thelema, but also has his own label here. 
and two very classic wines to have a look at. We'll try the Cabernet Sauvignon in a moment, uh, but this is his Syrah. It's 100% Syrah, and it's made by the man who's given you any of the Thelema wine you would have had over the last few years. If you're hearing the name Rudy Schultz and think, I'm sure I've heard it somewhere before on Dan Really Likes Wine, well, go back a bit and we did the Tamburskluf Syrah, and that's made by a guy called Gunter Schultz. And if you head over to Hartenberg, you'll find a guy called Carl Schultz, who's been there forever. The three brothers clearly have the art of making wine running richly through their veins. And just as the Kleinot, the Tamburskluf Syrah, uh, made by brother Gunther, was superb, so this is a delight. 100% Syrah, it's 2015, so it's certainly got some time to go, uh, but already it's got a, a lovely gentle feel to it. Uh, the peppery feel of a, a normal Shiraz or Syrah is there, but incredibly understated, and it's a, a lovely smooth flowing red wine. 100% Syrah, nothing to it but the Shiraz grape, and it's been done wonderfully. And the last of this week's wines, it's the second from Rudy, it's his Cabernet Sauvignon, where the Syrah was 100% thereof, so too is the Cab Sav. Uh, I really like the label, and the unicorn uh, probably has a meaning to it, I'm not sure what it is, but it could well be linked to the fact that this is not wine you see an awful lot of. It is a great rarity, and uh, you're probably only going to see a unicorn if you leave Montegrain Independence in the small hours of the morning after one bottle too many. Uh, if it's going to be one bottle too many, it might as well be one of these from Rudy Schultz, the independent side of Montegray and independent. Uh, Rudy spent time not just at Thelema, he's worked in France, worked in Chateauneuf du Pape, so he's got plenty of experience in the spiritual home. And so what he's done is what I like to think we've done as a whole with wine in South Africa. We've taken the stuff the French do and we've just made it better. Get-togethers with the brothers Schultz must be terrific. Three very gifted winemakers, each with their own individual stamps on very established wine labels. I reckon Christmas lunch lasts well into New Year once they get through all the wine that they've collectively put together. Mm. Slightly darker wine, again, very elegant, nice long finish. Uh, exactly what you'd expect from a Cabernet Sauvignon and a little bit more. It's uh, been done with a great deal of polish and, uh, and put together really well. Nice, strong Cabernet Sauvignon and uh, another great example of a South African winemaker who's produced something particularly good. Uh, Thelema is where the name has been made, uh, but the personal label, the smaller one, the unicorn label of which we don't see a great amount, is worth looking out for uh, because this is a, a lovely Cabernet Sauvignon, just as the Syrah was terrific, and just as Miles Mossop's wines before that were fantastic. And that's the real joy of this Montegrain Independence wine bar. Yes, it's very small. Yes, their choice is limited to, at the moment, just 12 different bottles of wine, but they are 12 exceptional bottles of wine, 12 bottles of wine made from very small amounts. And uh, while the volume might be minuscule compared to some of the bigger wine houses, the quality is certainly very, very high indeed. So if you're in Stellenbosch, drop by, there's a very good chance I'll still be here when you swing through. Cheers.